Hello everyone. I thought I would make uh, a new video on the progress of the Homebrew uh, CPU operating system. Um, so what I wanted to do on uh, this video is to show uh, the state of the computer right now and the state of the operating system and also give uh, an overview of everything uh, including the process, how you go and do a telnet into the into the system here so right now as you can see here I have PuTTY uh, open uh, and so I'm going to show you how you can access the uh, the system from your computer so so here we have the address uh, for this is sol-1.org and the port number is 51515 so if you go on PuTTY and you type this and then you choose uh, the telnet session it has to be a telnet session uh, this is the address there are a few configurations which you can do uh, to make it uh, better otherwise uh, it will act a little bit weird so if you go on terminal settings what you have to do is force uh, local echo off so you click here and you force local line editing to off as well so we don't want echo because the system already echoes everything back to you and we don't want uh, local line editing uh, we want it to be character mode so we get uh, immediate feedback when you press a character uh, another option that you want to mark is this one implicit uh, carriage return in every line feed uh, because I am uh, every time we uh, enter a new line I am only sending a line feed character I'm not sending the carriage return so you have to interpret the line feed and add a carriage return uh, for this on PuTTY uh, so that's uh, I think that's it uh, for configurations uh, okay so after that we can click open and you get the terminal here so you will get a blank terminal because my telnet uh, session is being hosted from the ESP8266 board um, so the ESP is a wireless uh, wireless system it's connected to my uh, one of my as a peripheral to my homebrew CPU uh, so when you connect you connect to, the, to it to the ESP8266 and it sends and receives uh, serial data to and from the CPU right so when you log into the ESP uh, it's just the way I programmed it it's not send sending anything back to you like a welcome message I probably should do that but for now it doesn't do anything so if you log in there you see a blank page so what you do is just press press return press enter and you get the prompt so as you can see the prompt here is just a forward slash and then you get the I don't know I forgot the hash hash symbol so that's that means you, we are in root uh, there's only one user on the system right now and it's root so we can do an ls so uh, what it is is I'm working on on the operating system from scratch so I'm writing a unix like operating system from scratch here so everything is written by myself in assembly and assembled with uh, with an assembler so it's all done from scratch I have not used code from anywhere else so for this reason not all the Unix commands are available actually most of them are not available just the ones that I have implemented so if you come here and you start using the system you'll notice uh, that sometimes when you type a command uh, it can just restart the system because it didn't understand the command and something went wrong and also some of the commands will not be accepting parameters for example ls right now it doesn't take any parameters uh, you, you can only type ls and it will show you everything uh, and the way it shows it is a, is a list like this so you can see so the first column here are the uh, file attributes so d for directory and then we have read write and a dash because it's not an executable so it's a directory uh, and then here we have the file size which in this case is uh, uh, my directories are do not have a size right now uh, the next one is just the just a numeric uh, index for the directory uh, in disk and then we have the date 
and then we have the folder uh, name or, or the file name okay so I'll give you um, an overview of everything in the system here what we can do and the commands available so the first one is of course ls uh, we can also you can also do an ls and you can type by a directory for ls so if you want to see what's in uh, usr for example you type ls usr uh, and you can see what's in that directory you see you can also give an absolute address so we can do an ls slash user slash bin for example that will also uh, do it so this shows all everything that i have in that directory which in this case are all the unix commands that i have right now so each command is itself a program and every time you type that command the program is loaded from disk for example ls you type ls here uh, the cpu loads ls from disk and executes it uh, of course it's much slower but uh, that's how it is right now so okay so that's ls we can also do the cd so change dir into usr for example then we can do ls we see everything that is in there uh, so we can also do so this command also accepts uh, it accepts any any type of path so you can do an absolute path as well so we can do cd usr slash bin for example and we are in that directory like that so as you can see inside this directory we do not have the uh, the dot dot directory or the single dot one uh, this is just a small uh, thing right now usually there will be those those ones if you create a new directory for example if we cd into root we can create a new directory here called test for example and we can cd into test and in that case you, you will find those two directories there uh, so we can do cd dot dot to go back upwards uh, because those the ones that do not have it is just an inconvenience uh, because I was using a previous uh, kernel version uh, to uh, reboot the system bring everything up so now I need to change some things uh, anyway so there we are uh, we can also let's see remove directory so I just created that directory I can do a remove directory test to remove that directory you can see it's no longer there so let's just navigate around so let's do a cd into etsy and we can also uh, kind of pipe commands it's not really a pipe but we can type multiple commands on a single line so cd etc semicolon ls to see uh, what's in the directory so we have three text files so we can also do a cat sh.conf to see what's in that text file here I have just a few configurations for example the path which is the standard place uh, that the system will look for executables when you type an executable name uh, we have the standard home directory I have the standard folder for the man pages and I have uh, uh, a path for just a welcome message when you reboot I forgot to reboot the system so to show you how it works so if you type reboot the system will reboot uh, we'll do everything and loads of your configuration files so that's uh, the reboot uh, I think that's yeah that's all what I have I also have if we cut the boots.conf to see what's in there um, hold on a second uh, so cd etc uh, yeah so we we'll need to cd into etc before we can cut with that uh, address because I just tapped cut boots.conf but I was in the roots directory I forgot, had forgotten to cd into it so okay so now we are in the etsy directory uh, we can cut uh, boots.conf to see what's in there uh, so that's just a, a path for the kernel image right so the kernel of the operating system is inside the file system and its name is kernel.0.1 but of course the boot does not know about file systems um, because it's trying to boot the system it's not has not loaded the kernel yet so it doesn't know how to fetch the kernel right so the way I do this 
is I have this configuration file called boot.conf and it has the address of the kernel right so when the um, after after this we can run I have another program in uh, CD if we CD into SBIN there's this program here called setup what setup does it it reads that configuration file then it finds the address of the image the kernel image uh, once it found that it looks looks up that file in disk and finds its uh, LBA address so the address of the kernel blocks in disk and what it does it takes that LBA and writes it into a special place in the boot sector in disk uh, which is the first sector on the disk it writes the LBA of the kernel there so that when we are trying to boot the system we can just read that LBA and we know where to find the kernel in the disk so we just load, load the kernel from that address so that's what that is uh, if we see the into boot for example that's where the kernel is right now so that's where the kernel file is um, let's see what else we have the var folder does not have anything right now so okay let's see the into usr right now so in usr we have bin which are all the commands uh, let's see what we have in SRC. Uh, okay, so let's do S uh, CD uh, SRC slash ASM. I have just one example assembly program here, so we can do a cat sieve dot s, which is just a sample program assembly program. So this is assembly language in the language that uh, my CPU understands, which is my assembly language. Um, I don't have a comp uh, an assembler on here on this system. I do the assembly on on a, on a, a proper Unix uh, system. So now let's see. Okay, so you see, if I type a command that uh, does not exist, the CPU will reboot. That's just a little bug that I have to fix. Um, so let's go back to USR okay so next let's do a cd into home slash guest which is the guest user let's do cd into ascii i just want to show you some pretty images so i have a few ascii images here so cat einstein for example will show just an ascii image uh, like that so we can do cat door and of course the uh, cat command uh, you can also type multiple uh, files like that so it will cut them together because it concatenates files so like that so okay so let's go back here and see there's also the guest book messages uh, so so let's cut guest.txt so you can see the messages that everybody has left here um, like that if you want to add your own message that's where the next uh, thing that I want to show you comes. So we, I wrote a simple version of the ed text editor, which is the was the first uh, text editor in Unix, I think, uh, written by Ken Thompson. So if we do just do an ed uh, like this, ed we are inside ed now. So if you type a command that it doesn't understand, it just sends you the question mark. So to load a file, we can do it. E for edit and then the file name so guest.txt it should load the file name and print the number of bytes so you can do a P to print the file uh, like this uh, we can also append one line to the file so if you type A enter now we are in append mode everything you type will be appended so you can type a message like hello world when you're done typing the message you just type a single dot by itself on a line and you press enter like that so that's appended one line so we can print the file again and you see that there's a new line there uh, you can write to the file by doing w and then file name like this and then enter uh, but this will create a new file it will not overwrite the old file and finally you can press q uh, to quit add like that so that's the add text editor is the simplest editor that uh, you can possibly have probably and I wrote a very simple version of it I still need to finish it 
Um, okay, so what else do we have? So let's do user again. Let's do local cd local. Uh, let's do cd bin. Okay, so the sieve is a program, a benchmark program that just finds prime numbers uh, in a certain time frame and tells you how many primes it found. So it's just a benchmark program. Uh, I when I was uh, because I usually go, uh, I usually visit the Magic One project uh, frequently by Bill Busby, uh, and um, I found this program a few days ago, which is a benchmark, and I wanted to write uh, my own version of it, so I wrote it. Uh, we can run the benchmark like this. Uh, so right now it is uh, calculating primes, uh, but this by the sieve of errors. Tothenes, and it tells you later how many primes it found. So, 1,899 primes, uh, and you use that in the time taken to benchmark your CPU. Uh, so let's see. I have also a, another program which is just a prime number finder. So you can give an upper bound, for example, let's say 200, and it finds all the primes up to 200 like that. Uh, so I also have an auto automaton uh, sample program like that. I think it's rule 30, but I'm not sure. I forgot. Uh, so, uh, so it's like the rule from uh, cellular automaton, uh, 1D automaton. And I also have CD games, just a text adventure that I was writing. It may not work because I think. I, the kernel updates, okay it works so you can navigate around, north, south, etc and X uh, tells you what's, what items you find so this, I just, I started writing this and didn't finish so it's not finished uh, we do Q to quit uh, let's see, okay what else do we have here uh, home, share, I think share I have have the man pages stored there. Uh, CCD doc OS. Yeah, I have a few files, text files for the CPU. That's uh, microcode.txt. Just a few uh, files. Yeah, so that's basically what I have right now. I spend a lot of time uh, making the system usable somewhat and implementing all the, not all, but some of the Unix commands so these are the commands that I have ls make bin is to create a program by typing the Intel hex uh, then we have remove to remove a file cat echo so you can do echo hello world it's just an echo like that we have ps uh, which is the processes or the processes running on the computer so for example if we do uh, so if I try to run let's see if we do a user local bin primes to run that primes program again let's say we type 10,000 as the as the limits the upper bound it starts running so we can do control Z to stop pause that process so we have actually paused the process we can do PS to see the process running you see it's still running it's process number two and it's on the background it's not running anymore it's paused if we want to bring the process back into life we can do a command fg and process number that brings it back uh, because of course the cpu like i said before is uh, it can run multiple uh, processes at the same time so we can do ctrl z again and it's still there so let's do foreground again and ctrl c this time completely cancels the process and stops it so if we do ps again it's no longer there you see so that's how it works that works so we have also the edge like I showed you we have uname which is just printing the name of the operating system uh, we have make dear we have pwd uh, we have mv to rename a file right now we have date like that and we have clear to clear the screen like that so I think that's basically what I have to show you right now um, yeah I think that's it uh, it's been a lot of work bringing the system to this point 
and there's still a lot of work to do so I'll be doing it slowly anyways uh, so if you want to visit uh, the, the projects you can just do a telnet you can go on on your prompts and you type telnet so one dot org five one five one dot five or you can just use uh, put putty and you come here like that so yeah that's it uh, I think I'll stop here and uh, thank you for watching